Chapter 20 Kidnapped I had become aware of the jangling noise accompanied by a voice punctuated with the sounds of laughter. Groaning, I roll over on the bed and open my eyes. I don't know why it surprises me that the TV is still on. I've fallen asleep with it on every night this week. Nor do I care who the man on the screen is or why he is talking about motorbikes and toast in the same sentence. I click it off. Relieved the jangling noise has stopped. I don't even know what day it is, and quite frankly, I don't give a damn. Reaching down beside the bed, I am disappointed to discover the alcohol bottles down there are all empty and drag myself out of bed as far as the minibar. I haven't been to work since Tuesday, however long ago that was. Opening the door to the minibar, I survey the array of miniatures and select the vodka. After I've drained the tiny vodka bottle, the jangling starts up again. Irritated, I grab hold of the telephone wire and jerk the little plug from the wall socket. The phone stops ringing and clatters noisily to the floor. I use the bathroom, relieving myself and rubbing my face with cold water. Then I grab a slice of the cold pizza, remains from yesterday, on the desk and munch my way through it. I'm not very hungry, but hungry enough to eat something. There is a knock on the door. Still chewing the pizza, I notice a white envelope on the floor that has been slipped under the door and lift it before peering through the peephole. Go away, I yell at the door, strain showing in my voice. But this is to no avail as Liv and Ryan continue to hammer on the door. Let us in, Mike, for God's sake, Liv cries, sounding highly strong. Growling, I rest my forehead on the door and feel myself relenting but I really don't want to deal with her right now. Twisting the lock on the door, the tumblers click open and I twist the handle, admitting them, before turning my back on the door and returning to the desk. Nobody has been able to get in touch with you for three days, she cries rushing into the room with Ryan on her heels. Three days! I simply shrug, my attention on the envelope in my hands, and turn it over. On the front, all it says is my name, spelt out with different coloured letters cut from magazines and newspapers. Something wrong with your phone? Liv says, walking towards the window. I turned it off, I yawn, running my finger along the underside of the flap on the envelope. Ryan sits down in the chair as Liv opens the curtains. You look like shit, Ryan says. I squint against the bright rays of sunshine and glare at her through narrowed eyes. Do you mind... You plan me to hole up in here for the rest of your life, she questions, her voice sharp. Frowning, I turn to the desk and lift the water bottle to my lips. Maybe, I huff moodily and knock some of the water back. What day is it? Saturday, Ryan says. Liv comes over to me and spins me round by the arm. It's time to pull yourself together now, she says. You talked to the press, didn't you? Sighing deeply, I keep my mouth shut instead of defending myself and shrug again. So what? I say, extracting the letter from the envelope. Did you see the papers on Thursday? She goes in. I can feel her attack coming on, and I'm unable to resist the urge to jump to my own defence any longer. It's my life, Liv, I cry, looking at her. I know you don't care what people say about me, but I do, and I'm entitled to defend myself. She rolls her eyes as if I am tiresome or something. Returning my attention to the letter, I try not to let her wind me up and unfold the page. The message in the letter is spelt out with cut-out letters, the same as on the envelope. I'm not debating that, Mike, but things have not improved, she says. As I read down the page, my blood runs cold and it's suddenly hard to breathe. Thursday, 11.30pm. I have your girlfriend, Eve McKenzie. Friday, 5am. She's bound, gagged and beaten unconscious. Friday, 9am. I've drugged her. Saturday, 10pm. She will be released, if you don't alert the police or press. The bad news? She won't remember a thing. The good news? She will miss Carrie. This story is now available as an ebook, so please check out the link in the description. I'd love it if you would buy it. And please note that you don't have to own a Kindle to read ebooks, because I don't know if everyone knows this. You, there is an app that's available. 